In this video, we will explore orthogonal sets and orthogonal basis vectors. First, let's start with the definition of an orthogonal set. A set of vectors v1 through vp in Rn is an orthogonal set if each pair of vectors is orthogonal to each other. And this holds for vi dot vj is equal to zero, as we've defined orthogonality before, for all i not equal to j. So every vector is orthogonal to every other one. As a simple example, in three dimensions, we have our usual axes over here. An orthogonal set could be something like this. So we have a vector along the x1 axis, and it has some length a. So it's defined as a0,0. Zero, zero. We have some vector along the x2 axis, and it has some length b. And we have a vector along x3, and it has a length c. And so altogether, this defines an orthogonal set. It's an orthogonal set, let's call these vectors v1, v2, and v3. It's an orthogonal set because v1 dot v2 is equal to 0, v1 dot v3 is equal to 0, and v2 dot v3 is also equal to 0. And that is the definition of an orthogonal set. We can make a very important observation about an orthogonal set. If the set of vectors S, which is defined to be V1 through Vp, which are all in Rn, are non-zero and orthogonal, then they are linearly independent. They're linearly independent because of their mutual orthogonality and the fact that you cannot make up any one of them out of a linear combination of the others, since they are all orthogonal to each other. This can be visualized in a space like R3 over here, where we can see that we cannot make the vector a0,0 zero, zero out of a linear combination of 0b0 uh, zero, zero, or 0,0c zero, zero, over here, and likewise for all of the other vectors. It's just not possible. This extends to all spaces and always works with a set of orthogonal vectors. Now, since they're all linearly independent, as we've shown before, this means that this set is a basis for a p-dimensional subspace of Rn. Since we have p-linearly independent vectors, this forms a basis for a p-dimensional subspace. This allows us to define an orthogonal basis. An orthogonal basis for a subspace W of Rn is a basis for W that is also an orthogonal set. So we've seen before that we can have a basis for a subspace as just any set of linearly independent vectors. But if that set is also an orthogonal set, then this forms an orthogonal basis. As an example, suppose that we have in R2, we have a vector v1 and a vector v2. Now these two vectors are linearly independent since they're not collinear and therefore the set v1 and v2 is a basis for R2. However, it is not an orthogonal basis since an orthogonal basis has to be composed of an orthogonal set. However, if we look at another example here, suppose that we have the same vector v1, but now the other vector looks more like this. And we have this 90 degree angle between them. Now, v1 and v2, by our old definitions, is still a basis for R2, because it's made up of two linearly independent vectors, but it's also an 
orthogonal basis. Since the two vectors are orthogonal to each other. The nice thing about an orthogonal basis is that finding the weights in a linear combination to get to a point in the space becomes much simpler than it was before. Specifically, let's say that we have a set v1, v2, up to vp, and let that be an orthogonal basis for a subspace W of Rn. Then for any B, for any B in W, we know that B has to be equal to a linear combination of our basis vectors since it is in that subspace. So it's equal to this. And normally, in order to find these weights for any basis, we would have to solve the equation ax equals b, where a is composed of the vectors v, the basis vectors, and we'd have to perform row reduction to find these. However, with an orthogonal basis, this is actually much simpler. Each cj is equal to b dot v sub j divided by v sub j dot v sub j. And this holds for all j from 1 through p. We will see in a later video why this holds, but for now, let's see how this makes things easier. So as an example, suppose that we have a basis as we did before, so let's actually give it some numbers. We have a vector v1 which is equal to 2, 1, and we have a vector v2 which is equal to 1, 3. These are again clearly linearly independent and therefore form a basis for R2. We want to get the vector b, which is equal to 2, negative 4. So we want to find the weights that are associated with the linear combination. To do this, we again have to solve ax equals b, where we put our basis vectors on the columns. So that's going to be like this. And we augment it with the vector we're trying to get to, b, over here. So this is the augmented matrix. And this then row reduces to 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 2. So we can see that b is equal to 2v1 minus 2v2. So again, in this case, the, the things weren't that complicated. It was a pretty simple row reduction, but still we had to go through the entire procedure. For larger dimensions, of course, this will be much more complicated. However, if we try to do the same kind of thing with an orthogonal basis by using what we just learned, so now suppose that our basis will keep the same v1, so v1 in this case will be still 2, 1, but now v2 will be orthogonal to it. It's going to be negative 1, 2, so this is v2. We're still trying to get to the same vector b, which is equal to 2, negative 4. Using what we just saw, we're still trying to find b equals c1, v1, plus c2, v2. But now we know that c1 is equal to b dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 which is equal to, as we saw before with the inner product, it's going to be this, which is equal to 0 over 5 
which is equal to 0. C2 will be found analogously b dot v2 over v2 dot v2. And this is equal to this, which is equal to negative 10 over 5. And that's equal to negative 2. So from here, just plugging things into this first equation, we have that b is equal to negative 2 v2. Now this procedure, while it may have taken about the same amount of time for this simple example, will make things much, much easier in higher dimensions. Altogether, we have seen how to define an orthogonal set and that such a set must form a basis for a subspace due to its linear independence. We have also seen an example of how such a set can be useful. Later videos will expand on these concepts and generalize further.